Hello everyone, I am in the Travis Gafford Esports studio right now, joined by Sebastian Park of the, well, Houston Rockets, but now Clutch Gaming. Both. Yeah, Both, really, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, people are going to know you more as Clutch Gaming, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, but first off, congratulations on making it into the LCS. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Now, let's talk about your road to making it into the LCS, because I've known you for a while, uh, but I think a lot of people maybe aren't, especially in league, aren't familiar with you know your history. So maybe you can talk to me a little bit about sure, that. Sure, because this is insert date here. Yeah. Whenever this comes out. Yes. Uh, we first made, and by we I mean the Houston Rockets, made the first hire for esports back December, November of last year. So and was year, that you? It was me. Okay. Yeah. Not not to be opaque about it, yeah, but yeah. like it was me. And You're like they hired a brilliant young mind oh, to come man. and run their esports efforts. You're so kind, man. Yeah, so yeah. kind. No, actually, so actually, what happens is that a lot of teams are buying, like, seventy six ers buy Dignitas, Liquid does the uh, the Axiomatic, Leonsis, Cooper thing. Sure. A lot of other teams are coming in right now, and one of the big things that happens is that the Rockets with the former owner Leslie Alexander is like, hey, instead of buying a team outright, let's like bring someone in. Let's build up our understanding over time and let's see what we can do. And so what's really cool there was that we basically came in, we went in and like we observed all the different games, Overwatch, Dota, Counter-Strike, League, Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Oh, yeah. you can read my mind. And then and PUBG to actually to a certain extent, Bangalore, a couple other games as well. Yeah. And we decided like very early on that League of Legends was our game. That League of Legends was a game we wanted to do. That was a game we were going to go into. And so... Fast forward a little bit, February or March, we were we hired our first couple people, like scouts and analysts for League of Legends, and then we submitted our application in July, and then we did our phase two and somehow got in. So why not try to acquire a challenger team or get in? Because this was kind of high risk, high reward, right? Like if you go through the application process, you make it in, that's great. But right. if you it's probably a lot easier for you to get in if you were already in, as my assumption. So uh, why kind of gamble it all on this application process? Yeah, so we actually looked at a few challenger teams and a few like LCS, like hybrid type teams sure. out there. And the big answer honestly was, was just like the timing was really crappy. Like as it turns out, free agency only happens once a year. Yeah. And we just didn't have access to like the top players we wanted or the infrastructure we wanted to spin up. And there just wasn't enough time, right? Because I got hired you know, sometime in November of last year. And it was just like, wow, we have to like spin up a roster and a team and everything in like two, three weeks. That's just way too hard for us to do. And we want to do it right the first time. And so we're like, you know, instead of doing it this cycle, let's give it a year. We had heard rumblings of, of like franchising and whatnot. But as you know, like people have been hearing rumblings of franchising for years now. Yeah, I mean, and, they, they announced, I believe at the end of, no, no, was it was it definitely into like 2017. Yeah, I, I guess, guess like it was, maybe yeah. March or April. Yeah, I did that interview, I should know, but I, uh, yeah, so. Oh, it, that infamous, oh yeah, yeah you, you did knew. the infamous interview. Yeah, yeah. With the one that we Noah Winston yeah. and, uh, and Andy Din, one right, of which man. made it and one of which did not. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say which one. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Like who it's, knows? It's, it's, that's still under NDA, right? Yeah, I, I think it's, I'm sure it is difficult for you guys because I'm sure you were under a ton of NDA for a while and it was difficult to like operate i assume right yeah yeah so i think one of the biggest things that was super interesting and we're like starting to like release out to the public is that we've been like generating scouting reports we've been talking to people we've been looking at staff like not just on player side but also on the like social media marketing and some of the other sides and trying to level up our like houston rockets side to be better at esports and we just couldn't talk about it at all sure like, like last time we had i think dinner like a few months ago i was just like yeah, we're working on nothing still. Yeah, Doing I mean, at the, I saw you at the Sloan Analytics Sports Conference at the start of the year, mm -hmm. and I was giving you crap because you'd already been working for the Rockets for a while, and I was like, are you ever going to do anything in esports? And you're like, we're doing things. So we go talking to people. Okay, come on, let's be real. I, I definitely said we're doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, And you're like, you're full of crap. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went from there. Sure. So, so uh, you guys came in that way. What is your personal background? Because, again, for not just on the Rockets side, but... I think League of Legends fans might not know. You've been around in esports for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I got my first star in esports with Namecheap, the domain registrar. Yeah. Big support of net neutrality. Go net neutrality. Yeah. Uh, you can buy is, domain names there. Is the Clutch Gaming website going to be registered through Namecheap? I mean, I think it actually is. Okay. I have to double check. I did not do that, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. But uh, when I was there, we did user acquisition and sponsorship and a lot of things like that. And the thing that really jumped out to us in 2014 
was esports was already huge, but people weren't investing into it as much. Yeah. And so we were the first domain registrar to like sponsor teams. So we sponsored like pre-cursed Team Liquid, post-cursed Team Liquid. We sponsored like Tempo Storm, sure. Team Marcon, a couple other teams. And as you and I both remember in 2015, things really started to pick up steam yeah. and go crazy in this space. And when that happened, a team called you know, Team Archon, which was a primarily a Hearthstone and Dodo team, asked me to come join them as their COO and then eventually CEO. And I ran that for, um, from 2015 to 2016. And then you know, they became more of a streaming team, was interested in streaming as much as I am with esports. Sure. And the Rockets offer came and I said, sounds great. Yeah. So. Uh, one of the interesting things, and you kind of mentioned this, but you guys have been at this for about a year now, right? Yeah, you were saying. Just about. And it, you, from talking to you previously, you guys were already kind of figuring out how to build a League of Legends team long before the application process began. Yeah. And so, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Like some of the. You, you guys were kind of looking at players, I think, even, and, and that kind of thing? Yeah, for sure. We'll definitely go into specifics when we can. But yeah. for now, I think the big thing was we just didn't think there was enough time, right? We saw the schedule. We saw the application process. And we were like, hey, if we have to wait until literally when we get in in order to be able to field a good roster, there won't be enough time to do that. There's so many other things to worry about. There's so many other moving parts that we need to start doing our research now. And so it's like a really bad business decision. Right, because it's not a good idea to like, throw, have to like, hey, owner boss, like, let's like, go spend your money before we know what this underlying asset is. Sure. But it was like, a super important for us to be, hey, like, let's make sure we start leveling up our understanding. Let's make sure that we can like, catch up to these other LCS teams. Because like, you know, people like Andy, people like um, the guys of Red Cloud 9, super smart at building rosters, super good. And they have a lot of underlying assets, right? They already have contracts, they already have. Well, well, they don't have contracts anymore. Well, they don't anymore. have contracts anymore. Hey. But like, they, they have like contracts of players. Yeah. Like TSM already has like a top of the line top laner who's NA, top of the line mid laner who's NA. Like there are a lot of inherent advantages already. We just didn't want, to in, want information to be another disadvantage for us. Yeah. Now, you made it in. What was the application process like for you guys? So I think we were one of the first applications in. I, I have to guess. We, so we found out about the application. We had a lot of that information already ready to go because yeah. we were anticipating some type of thing happening. And so we got in our application like right after 4th of July, yeah. like July 5th or 6th or something like that. Did you guys do that San Francisco style rental situation where you show up and you're like, here's the application. Here's the cost to get in. We're ready to go. Please get us in right now. I mean, not that bad because like <laughs> SF rent is really awful. Yeah. But what we ended up doing was just like, we thought the deadline, I think originally was like July 15th, right? And it got, gets pushed back. Yeah. But we were like, no, we definitely want this thing to be in one of the first guys in. Sure. And so we, uh, with, and thanks to like Jose and like Ken and Will and all our guys on our design team, we like worked through 4th of July. We like canceled holidays. Sure. We worked on a book. We made a really nice application. But on top of that, we had all this previous research we've been doing for the last few months. So we included that in there. And then we got in the door that way. And then we immediately started preparing for what if we didn't make it. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about what Clutch Gaming is going to be. Because all the different teams kind of had their taglines on mm -hmm. there. And I think yours was kind of something about uh, analytics or numbers and that kind of thing. Yeah, so that's, that's sort of really interesting, right? Because we're really interested in numbers and analytics, but we're not like actually actively using them all the time, okay. right? Um, one of the more interesting things that's happening right now is that there's this perception that like all of our scouting reports, or like that we're just op.gg, right? Sure. Like we're like buying op.gg and we're gonna make all our decisions based off op.gg. And that's just like strictly not yeah, true. You should, right? Mobilytics is the better Like Mobilytics, yes, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mobilytics. Yeah, like, definitely so great guys over much, there. Much better partners. Uh, 100%, yeah. definitely guys who can definitely build a roster. Okay, with. so but your, <laughs> but, your point, yes. But, but we just don't think that's true. Yeah. We think that this is a really, really, really hard problem. Mm -hmm. We don't think that there is ability for us to be able to form rosters based on, without the entire picture. Sure. And so re what we actually did was we spent a lot of time scouting. Like okay. we just watched film on everyone. And we have like scouting reports and data sheets and data, I don't mean like number sheets, but literally like, hey, what was your matchup? What was your lane matchup yeah. on every single player in LCS, every single player in EU LCS, every single player in LCK, LPL, LMS, and then every single player in Challenger and LSPL. And so, um, and Korean Challenger, but that's a different one. And so that's a lot of what we did. 
But that doesn't, that's not to take away from the fact that we really care about analytics. Yeah. We do think that this isn't impossible. It's just really hard. Well, and, and so, part, of, part of the reason that this, I think, has gotten attached to you guys is that the rockets are kind of known for doing this, right? Right. I mean, like the big rockets discovery of Mori Ball, right, with Daryl Mori, who you know, advises a lot of the stuff we do, is that three is a larger number than two. Yeah. And we haven't found anything that simplistically explained yet. But the hope is basically, look, if we think that growth and understanding of League of Legends is a step function, which just basically means nothing happens for a while, then suddenly a lot of things happen. Yeah. And similarly, we're looking at that analytics and more different approaches the same way. Yeah. Are there things we're missing right now? And will we suddenly level up eventually? Well, the, the first piece of content you put out was a, a kind of analytics numbers driven piece, right? You guys yeah. haven't even announced your roster. But you, you're already putting out content out there that's kind of looking at the numbers of League of Legends. Yeah, I mean, so like, I, I, one of our head of R and D, his name is Yuan Fang. He's a really smart guy, like probably one of the smartest guys in the space. And he just was like, "Look, we have this thing we have. We don't know if it's useful yet, yeah. but it's super cool." And I was like, "Yes, this does seem super cool." And we just wanted to let people know, like that, like we just want to let people know what we're working on. Sure. And that may end up being completely useless. It probably is, honestly, if I had to guess. And if 99% of the things we work on are completely useless, we're okay with that. Because that 1% of things, that one thing that we find, yeah. it's going to be super cool. Can give you the edge. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, kind of going back to the rocket. So what is, what is the clutch gaming situation in terms of ownership? And because there's so many, so many people think like, okay, you, you can see like the Yankees coming in mm -hmm. with Echo Fox and then you have issues or you have situations like the Golden Guardians where they're very much attached to Golden State Warriors. I think for a lot of people, there's not always an understanding of, all right, are these things owned by the owner of this? Are they like, how attached are they to the team? So we obviously know Rockets are involved in all this stuff. So maybe you can explain to me, I don't need a cap table, but how, how this stuff looks. So actually it's, it's super easy for yeah. us, right? Most organizations have multiple owners. Like the yeah. Bucks have multiple owners, the Warriors have multiple owners, the Knicks have multiple owners. We have Tillman Fertitta. Tillman Fertitta owns Landry's, he owns a Golden Nugget. He's a great guy, real sharp mind, great businessman. And what he's done is that he just bought the Rockets, right? Okay. In the middle of our process, as we were applying actually, right? Because we applied July like 5th or 6th. Sure. And then we announced that we're selling the team like a couple weeks later. Sure. And then we sell the team in August. Like that's a, first of all, that's a quick turnaround, but right. also like it's just one guy. And so, we're a little bit easier because we're an entity owned also by Tillman Fertitta. Okay. And so like, like regardless of what you think, it's like the Rockets own Clutch Gaming or like the Rockets are a separate entity. It doesn't matter because it's the same owner. Okay. So what, how, how intermingled is the Rocket stuff? Like first off, mm -hmm. Clutch Gaming kind of a reference a little bit it's to that area. So how, how much are we going to see that the Rockets get involved with Clutch Gaming? How much should, should fans associate these two brands? Yeah, I mean, so I think the first thing to know is just how much they've already been involved, right? The, the scouting organization, the coaching organization, the front office organization, the revenue guys, and guys and women actually, our CRO is Gretchen Cheer, our like, head of marketing, our head of branding. Everyone's been involved in this process from day one. And so that's super useful because it's not like we're trying to re-spin up a relationship. It's like, hey! Hey man, do you want to work on esports? It's more like I've just been around the office for the past sure. year. Like being like, hey, we need to work on this. Can you help us out with this? What's the best way to you know, showcase a player or announce a player? What's the best way to like make our brand look cool? Yeah. Stuff like that. So uh, what's the best way to scout players? What's the best way to coach players? What's the best way to like build a roster? Yeah. And so that's sort of like a really, at least on the personnel level, is super interconnected. And how about just on the brand level because, and sort of, the association of these two things, are, are we gonna expect to see Rockets and, and Clutch Gaming and, and not only the league team, but if you guys ever get into other games in the future, are we gonna see these two things very, very closely intermingled? I mean, even like as an example, mm -hmm. uh, I know Clutch Gaming, again, reference to sort of the Rockets and that city and all that stuff, but also you can compare it to kind of like the Golden Guardians where literally like the logo looks very similar, Golden State Warriors, Golden Guardians, you know, like sure, there's, sure. there's definitely a lot going on there. On the Rocket side and the Clutch uh, Gaming side, what should we kind of expect to see in those areas? Mm, so I think like, first of all, our color scheme is pretty similar, yeah. right? Like we're red and black. The Rockets, some of the Rockets colors are red and black. 
I think a lot of the similarities you'll see is just in, in terms of approach. Sure. And in terms of some of the more like high level things. We also identify with Houston, right? Like we're a team that wants to have fans all over the world, but we are like associated with the Houston Rockets. We will do outreach in Houston as well, but that's not going like hamstring us, right? And so it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. We really want to uh, you know, be our own brand. We don't want to be tethered to having to be these guys, but at the same time, we do want to like leverage those resources, level up the LCS, yeah. help out everyone. Should, should fans in Texas and especially in Houston feel like they need to be fans of Clutch Gaming? I'm sure your answer would be yes, everyone should be a fan of Clutch Gaming, but should, should they be also in part because of kind of the region component? I, that's a great question, actually. I wouldn't say necessarily yes, right? I think fandom is really interesting. I think fandom is a combination of you know, finding people and players and identities you like. Yeah. And if that's like, you know, if that's Golden Guardians, like that's fine. I think you're making a mistake. Sure. Like you should never be fans of the Golden Guardians. You okay, should always sure. be fans of Clutch Gaming. Sure. But like, you know, if, if, they, if you identify with their brand or with them as people or their team, good for you. You should totally be fans of them. That's great for all of us as a scene, right? Yeah. But if you like what we're about, which is you know being more transparent about what we're talking about, be more transparent of the type of decisions making decision making we have, being allowing you to be like a like you know like Monday night uh, Tuesday night quarterback Tuesday yeah. morning quarterback rather similar like questioning our decisions, we're all for that. Sure. And so if that's the case, please be a fan of us. And if you're a fan of the Rockets or you're a fan of like Houston or Texas sports, also be a fan of us because if you don't have another team, we'll take care of you. Cool. If let's go really quickly just to that last bit because uh, you've kind of mentioned this before in talking to me, but can you talk a little bit about this transparency philosophy that you guys have and and maybe how that's derived a little bit from the rocket side? Yeah, sure. So I think the rockets in particular and you know up and down the organization is very open about what we do and the decisions we make. And one of the things that we're going to definitely do is just be like, hey, here's why we like these players. Here's why we think this player is so much better than someone else. And we won't, that's not to say that other players aren't bad or are good or bad or somewhere in between. It's just that like, we just want to be more upfront about how we're thinking about things. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, one of the big things we see in League of Legends among teams pre historically was this idea that their information is so valuable, they have to keep it to themselves, right? And we just don't think that the half-life, like the longevity of information is that long in League of Legends. Like something you know to be a fact in 2016 is definitely false today. Right? And something you knew for a fact at the beginning of the year is yeah. definitely gone today. I had a job in 2016. I had Mom, a job man. at the beginning of the year. Yes, so gonna, many facts have, are so different. You're going to have a job next year too, man. Like, it'll be fine. It'll be completely fine. This is a job, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as, <laughs> as, I mean, only as a, as a point, you know, Rockets and Clutch Gaming didn't exist earlier at this all. year right. and next year. Look, if you, year. if you told me 15 months ago that I'd be working for the Rockets and if you told me 12 months ago that we would have an LCS team, I think yeah. you, I, I'll think you're crazy. And so we're very fortunate to be in this position and we just want to be like very transparent with you know, our fans and supporters and even with our players and team, just like, here's what we're thinking, here's what we're doing, here's what we're looking at, yeah. and here's try, trying to help everyone get better. I know you can't talk about rosters yet, but final question, how is Clutch Gaming going to win, win spring split playoffs? So let's see. So I think the, so hopefully we're like the first seed okay. and we have uh, Golden Guardians as six seed. Not okay. Um, so the... The, the best way to go about this probably is that we just don't know, right? I think one of the big things that we look at is trying to get a sense of make sure our players are getting better, right? Like, it's not okay. This, someone said this the other day, right? Like, it's probably the case that there are mid laners today who are better than Baker in 2013. Because in the last four years, or the majority of mid laners today at the pro level are better than Baker in 2013. Because in the last four years, everyone's gotten better. Sure. And so part of trying to make, first we have to make summer play or spring playoffs. And then for us to win it or do well in it, we just have to have improved between now and then. Yeah. And so how we do that, we're still working on. Sure. Anything you want to say to any of the fans out there who are thinking about becoming Clutch Gaming fans, maybe looking at some of the roster rumors that are out and enjoying a supposed lineup. Anything out there that you want to say? Yeah, sure. If you have any questions or concerns or if you want to like, ask or like question our decision making, please do. Okay. Like one of the big things for us is like, we don't know what we're doing half the mm -hmm. time. Most people don't know what they're doing half the time. We're just trying to make the best educated guess we can based on the set of information we have and then go from there. Yeah. And so please support us if you can. And 
if you want to support another team for a little bit and come over later in the split, yeah. we're more than happy to have you then. Yeah. Well, if you love people questioning your decisions, you're going to love the League of Legends subreddit. Oh, yeah, it's no, got it's... everything you need. I, I love Reddit, and yeah. I love League of Legends subreddit. Yeah. We'll see how you feel a couple months from now. Thank you so much, uh, Sebastian, for sitting down with me in the Travis Gafford Esports Studios here. Uh, the luxurious, luxurious studios. You can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here on my YouTube channel. A lot of people ask me whenever I said that other thing about Double F charging me $5,000 for an interview if that was real. No, it was an obvious joke. He charges me $10,000 an interview. <laughs> please, please help me out. TravisGafford.com support.